All right, it's Saturday. It's time to work on the drag cars. Saturdays are for the toys, as I've mentioned in the past. Um, I have a old valve cover or another valve cover. This is the 16 valve valve cover that originally came on the engine. Um, the one that's on the drag car now um, has obviously been quite a bit modified in the past. I had shaved it all down. This was on my Rabbit years ago. Um, and I welded on the AN bungs for the catch can. Um, but what we're gonna do this time is, as you guys would have seen on the dyno, it pukes a lot of oil because the valve cover has no baffling or anything. So my plan is I'm gonna modify this valve cover extensively um, to create a baffle and I'm going to upgrade to dash 12 uh, lines, which probably isn't 100% necessarily but we're gonna do it anyways. Uh, and also, I need to make these spark plug holes bigger to match the two liter coil packs that I now run um, on, on the engine. The way it was before, or the way that we got the two liter coil packs on here now, um, we had to modify the coil pack and cut a whole bunch of it apart in order for it to fit into this. And by doing so, the coil packs push out of the cylinder head. Not all of them, but the odd one does because they're all cut up. So we're gonna eliminate that problem as well. Clayton's here. He's gonna build a CAD, CAD. He's gonna do some CAD for me, cardboard aided design. And then I'll probably uh, modify, or I'll probably put it in fusion and we'll cut it all out of plasma or cut them out on the plasma table. Uh, but the goal is to, to work on the catch can today and the valve cover. So let's get to it. Okay, here's my plan of attack. I'm gonna try to utilize these humps as a reference of what I wanna do. I wanna plate this, and in order to do so, this valve, or the uh, oil cap, which I'm replacing, is too tall in comparison. So I'm gonna put it on the mill, I'm gonna mill this down, and then I'm gonna cut a piece of plate that I have here on the plasma table to kind of line up with all of these holes and to fit this space. Um, and then I'll have to machine out these holes, like I said, for the coil packs, which I do know there's enough space in order to be able to do that, because some guys offer that as a service on these older valve covers. Um, but first thing is to kind of cut this down and I'll measure it out and I'll get a plate on top of this. So let's get to it. All right, now that I have this the same height as these, I can make the upper plate for this and uh, then obviously it needs to be all welded on. I need to drill a whole bunch of holes in this first, but first that was making that even and then I'm going to start now figuring out the little bit of windage or baffling that's going to happen between these two pieces. This is a catch can. I managed to make a mess of this out of a regular box and then all I had to do is really put a taper on this side and just cut a slot out of here, so. Okay, Let's we'll go show it. them how it fits. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Show the peeps. So the reason, oh geez, the reason why we have this cutout on the back is obviously for the wheel well. So fits up nice and snug under here. We're gonna use some rib nuts with some little flanges uh, or tabs, I guess, on either side. So it just sneaks up inside there and obviously it's gonna look a little bit nicer made of aluminum. Maybe paint it black or red or something, Dave? What do you think? I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I, then, I do like the wrinkle paint. Oh wrinkle paint, that hides all the messes. 
and then it's hard to see and hold the camera and do all this, but uh, the AN fittings are on the top there uh, for the lines coming off the valve cover and off the breather tube, off the crankcase. And then it's gonna be a line coming off probably like here to go back as a vent to the back of the car with a filter. All right, catch can is pretty much done. Although I um, took my time with it, I wasn't too worried about like scratching it and stuff because I had always planned to wrinkle coat it. it just would look better in the car black. So that's gonna be the drain for it. So we'll just drain it outside the car. Um, these are for the valve cover and the crankcase. This is going to be uh, for the overflow tank for the coolant so basically anything if the engine's gonna puke in any way um, it's all gonna come in the catch can unless obviously it scatters the block or something like that and it goes into the catch pan and then this is a two inch breather that's gonna go to the back of the car um, you'll see once I get it all mounted in there but just wanted to film it a little bit like this first and then uh, we'll wrinkle coat of black don't get my gut no I won't film I actually don't care. I'm not, manner, care. I'm not anorexic like you. <laughs> Putting plane to work in here, drilling out for our catch can. Mount here. That looks like you pretty much push the drill bit right through. I'm pretty tough. I know you're pretty tough. Yeah. And Robbie's trying to make the wires look all pretty finally, which is endless amounts of hours of work. And we got the catch can pretty much built, so we're now trying to mount it. Okay, what we're doing now is, there was footage of me welding this up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the valve cover plate is welded to the valve cover, and now we're machining out the holes, the spark plug holes, out to fit the two liter coils, which I'll show you in a second, they're bigger. So the way we did it on the last setup for the car to run, we butchered the coils to fit down in the holes, which are much smaller. So we're machining these out to fit the bigger coils. Let's get to it. So yeah, just explaining this, this part of the coil didn't fit down in the stock 16 valve cylinder head. So on the, rate, on the car, the way it's been running, we cut all this down in order to get them to fit down in the, the head. But also, as you can see, at one point on the, during the dyno session, they started to pop out and Clayton had quickly built this bracket to keep us moving along, but I don't want this piece on there. So we're machining the valve cover to fit it. No, Dave, I don't, I don't want to.
plain <laughs> valve cover. It's a very long and slow process, and this is clearly not what it's going to look yeah, like in the end. It's not done, because I, I did do a B-roll <laughs> on it, and there's like spots where that needs some, some love and stuff. Yeah, this it's, is all going to get welded again, and then ground down, and the fittings need to be welded on, the new oil cap. Should we show them what kind of it looks like? No, they're just going to have to wait. Yeah, they'll have to wait till next one. So it's getting a new oil, oil fill cap and uh, dash 12 fittings. Clayton did mill out all the holes for that. We did talk about that a little bit. I still need to do a bunch of welding and grinding and stuff, but this is kind of the premise of it, and we'll show you the bottom, because I don't think we've filmed much of this, just mm -hmm. drilling the holes out. But the idea of it now is it's going to have some baffling, so it's got to go up through these holes, and then if you remember on the original valve cover, there's a bunch of lines that are cast into the valve cover. Yeah, so there's long ones, uh, no, short ones here. Yeah, and then long ones here, so they have to get up and cruise around those, and then go around right. here to get to here. So Clayton's got it, nailed it. So that was kind of my concept in my head, because it puked so much oil all the time before. Um, this was something to try to mitigate some of that problem. I do expect that there's probably still going to be a bunch, but this should help quite a bit. And unlike a 1AT valve covers factory, they do have a bunch of baffling in the valve cover, which is why it's not as common as a problem. This is a naturally aspirated engine. It's a problem. So let's get to the car. And the catch can's in. We filmed Clayton drilling holes out of it. And obviously, I don't think I filmed painting it and stuff like that. No, you definitely didn't. But um, the gist of it is there's three dash 12s um, that are going to two on the valve cover, one on the crankcase. We have the overflow from the bottle, uh, the coolant bottle that's gonna come over to here. And then on the inside, I think Clayton talked about some of it, but we got a big breather that's gonna go to the back of the car. Right there. And then there is a fitting I put on the bottom, which we're going to put a drain, a, a little piece of line and a drain so that we can drain the catch can outside the car. So we don't have to worry about getting any special pan inside the car, making a big mess. Also, this isn't going to be here like this anymore because that's all changed. But Robbie, yeah, ignore, ignore this. Ignore this. Part, yeah. um, Robbie did a bunch of the wiring. This is still because this is the first season with this harness. It was all kind of built from scratch. Well, not complete from scratch. It was a flying lead harness from Haltech. But first time doing it. First, it's a whole new setup. We wanted to leave all the wires easily accessible. Yeah, so in it's case we just, have to add like sensors. Exactly, and do other or there's stuff. a repair. It's yeah. all just split loom for now. Um, we suspect next winter we'll probably pull it out, redo it, like heat shrink it all, do everything we need to do to it. There's a couple spots that we need to put like heat wrap and stuff on it, but the gist of the wiring now looks really good. And actually, Clayton, you need to get some B-roll of inside the car because it doesn't even look like the car runs. There's like no wiring in the car, which is insane. And it's all because of the R5 PDM and everything all built into one. Um, I don't know what else. Clayton. Painted alternator. Ooh, we tore apart an alternator, refreshed it. We thought we had a faulty alternator. Going back to the wiring thing, actually. Yep, exactly. And that was nothing to do with this harness, actually. It was just one of the old yeah. cables that we used. Um, so one of the lugs came off. The last like thousand horsepower runs that we were doing, I had no alternator. I didn't even pick up on it. But you it. had one, it just wasn't charging. It wasn't doing anything. It was 11.8 volts during the lugs. Um, so let's show you the inside of the car. As you can see, aside from this cable, which we think this is just a USB cable to the ECU, and this ECU is wireless, so we don't even need it. Um, but the, the gist of the wiring is, is so basic that it doesn't even look like the car is will run. It's kind of maddening, isn't yeah, there's it? No, there's no, there's nothing. I'm trying to, trying to show the peeps here, but yeah, there's not like, there's a little bit of harness and stuff, but nothing. Not very not much. much. So that was kind of the goal with this. Clayton and Robbie. I don't know if anybody's ever had the dash out of their car, but it's like a rat nest usually. So. Yeah, and, and uh, Clayton and Robbie originally, they were like, no dash, no dash, and I wasn't really feeling it at all, but because of the ECU and the lack of wiring and stuff, it definitely was the right move. What do you guys think? You like the no dash? Yeah, no dash or, or dash or no dash. Um, it is really dirty because of the grinding and stuff we've been doing in here. But what's next for it, Clayton? We have oh, oh. Robbie started working. Well, we got to get work. The paint. Yeah. Robbie started working on the windows today. Yeah, does it, uh, 
yeah, little, little, little brackets little and stuff there to, to hold the windows up because they're urethane. So and you know, we have a urethane, sorry plexi we, or whatever. Lexan. Lexan, yeah. Um, well, polycarbonate technically is what it is. Lexan, I think, is a brand. Clean. It is a brand. Like it's like Kleenex or Kleenex. Q-tips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We do have a list, a running list now. We, uh, we got our schedule. Our first race that we're trying to make it to is June 1st. So we got two months. We do have quite a bit of stuff to do to it still. Scaling it and doing all the weight ballast, all that stuff is still going to be quite involved. The fire suppression, we never really talked much about it, but that bottle did get mounted in there. So we have an idea of where we're going to run all the fire suppression stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that next video. Yeah, so we do have some bigger items on here. Nothing crazy. Obviously, the car runs, but it's getting nicer. We're getting amped up for the season. If you guys have any questions about this thing or anything else on the channel, Clayton, usually when I ask you if there's any questions, you basically stare at me with a blank face. What about this? What? <laughs> Slip like and break your ankle. Yeah, I almost broke my ankle. Um... I got nothing, man. See? I'm done. I'm done. No, no, merch, merch, merch. We come up with some new stuff or what? We are going to come up with some new stuff. I would say within the next, I'm trying to be realistic here, uh, probably within the next month, five to six weeks, I'm going to say. Just a heads up, that stuff helps support this support this channel yeah. and everything that we do. This is, again, I've mentioned many times, we're a shop first. We'd love to show you guys all just our cars and builds all the time because Clayton and I and Rob, we have lots of cars, lots of things we can build, but we got to pay the bills, keep the doors open. So any support at all, we really appreciate it. Thanks. See you in the next video. Man, this looks good. It does look good. It's not yours.